all pigments are different. You know, they have their own personality. Some pigments are a little bit naughty. Some behave like the sweetest kid around. Pigments that are very vibrant and, you know, cheer you up. Pigments that you just want to... In the end, they're all different. But different isn't worse. Different isn't better. Different is just what makes it more interesting to work with pigments. So what exactly is a pigment? A pigment is an unsoluble particle of a color, a hue, that has been used for giving color to paint, plastics, textile, any kind of building material, uh, anything of color that you see around you in this world that has been made by man has a pigment in it. So, oh, maybe that's kind of arguable. Forget the absolute statement over there, but, you know, you, you get what I mean. A pigment is used for a wider range of giving colour to objects, art, things. Right, so, those are pigment particles, and like I said, unsoluble, so that's the main difference between a pigment particle and a dye. So that's the main difference when, when you're working with them. When I take a glass of water and I put some pigment in it, the pigment won't dissolve, it won't kind of flow with the water. When I put some powdered dye in it, the dye will dissolve and become one with the water. So that is the reason why we need to mull our pigments when we're making paint. We need to disperse them into the binder and make a kind of emulsion of it. Um, there are pigments that give off loads of color to water. They kind of give it off. So there is a sort of a solution going on. But when we're talking about pigment particles uh, in paint or just as a dry pigment, uh, when we dissolve them in water and let that water dry, we will clearly see pigment particles under the microscope. Right? Those particles haven't been dissolved in the water. Um, they didn't change any shape like uh, salts would do. Salts are, are particles as well. When you put them in water, it dissolves, but when you put them on a the microscope, they form little crystals, they form patterns and shapes, uh, almost snowflake-like under the microscope. They change the way they look because um, it was a solution, but when the water is out, the solids stayed. Pigments don't do that. So, what else is a pigment? What else can a pigment do? Apart from being a particle, it is a particle with a different size, depending on the pigment we're working with. So we have very coarse pigments, very f like large grains of pigment. Um, and everything is relative when I'm saying large, like it's not this. That would be ridiculous. Um, we have very fine pigments. We have hydrophobic pigments that just push away water or... Uh, your gum arabic binder when you try to you know, put them next to each other you have pigments that aren't hydrophobic at all and just love to mingle with your binder we have uh, pigments that stain and actually just 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 go into the paper and won't let go of that paper we have pigments that lift when you re-wet them when they're on the paper dried beautifully painted and uh, you re-wet them and just just dab them off with a, a clean piece of towel or a dry brush you just lift them off and you have almost white paper underneath it maybe sometimes fully white you lift it completely off it, it doesn't go into the paper it's not staining at all we have pigments that granulate form beautiful aggregation uh, aggregates of, of 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 pigment particles that just draw to each other or or, or sink down to the paper quicker than than um than the rest of the the, the, the color is on the paper which gives us um well, I want to show you an example, which which gives you a beautiful 
granulating effect when you know watercolors or when you're interested in pigments you know what i'm talking about we have pigments that are fully transparent even in, in, in its mass tone they are transparent uh, we have pigments that even in washes are almost fully opaque um, we have natural pigments synthetic pigments organic and organic uh, there are loads of different kinds of pigments out there. So wh when you're buying a pigment, it's not just I, you know, have a bottle of pigment in my hand or a, a bag or a jar, and uh, you say, okay, this is a nice color, um, and you you learn to use that in your art whether you make watercolor paint as I do, oil paint when you when you want to uh, add them to an acrylic dispersion um, or an acrylic emulsion, um, whether you want to make gouache out of it or tempera, that doesn't mean that when you go to that same store and buy a different color of pigment, that that pigment will work and react in the same way as that other pigment did, because all pigments are different. Right, and that's what I find the most interesting thing about pigments. They have their own character, they have their own personality. Some pigments are a little bit naughty, some behave like, you know, the sweetest kid around. We have maybe grumpy pigments. Pigments that are just a bit bland. Pigments that are very vibrant and, you know, cheer you up. Or pigments that you just want to throw away your palette knife and muller and just, you know, that pigment gives you a hard time. The differences in pigments is what makes it beautiful for me to work with. Because in the end, they're all different, but equally as beautiful or as useful in their own way. And obviously, um, I I love all pigments. I have my you know I have pigments that I enjoy working with more than others. I wouldn't say those would be my favorite pigments to work with per se i have pigments that give me a lot a lot of work to actually work them into a paint uh, when we're talking about mineral pigments you still need to kind of crush them on your slab and after that you know you need to mold them and you, uh, it takes a different kind of approach but different isn't worse Different isn't better. Different is just what makes it more interesting to work with pigments. As you've seen, maybe seen in uh, the videos on my uh, in my channel, I try to work with pigments that um, might be more interesting than. Just your plain regular old. I don't know. I just said plain regular old, but, I, but that's not the way I, I feel or think about pigments. But a lot of people would just grow, grab, go, go grab a bag or bag, a tube of a yellow pigment or a blue pigment, and uh, they they don't know what they're working with, which pigment it is, and that's completely fine, because if that's the color that you need. And it's within your like budget or price range. Go for it. If it's student grade paint because you cannot afford any else, any different, or uh, if you're just working on a concept and you don't want to waste any any expensive artist quality paint on it, just just go for it. It's, it's whatever you need. Um, but the more you look at your tube of paint. And you more, the more you notice the difference in behavior of the pigments, um, the more you're going to look at that label when you are in that art supply shop 
or when you're wh wh whenever you are browsing online to to look for a new tube or maybe a new set of paints as you think about okay you know this is what i liked about that but what was that what why, why was this, this different than the other thing i remember very clear that there was um someone quite new to to the pigments um th they also made paint uh, but it didn't really care about the pigment numbers or the different personalities, if you will, uh, of pigments. And they wanted to make it green. And they took a jar of yellow ochre because, you know, it's yellow. And they added that with blue. Because, you know, yellow and blue would make it green. Well, in that case, that blue with this yellow, that didn't give any green. It became like a grayish color. Beautifully separating, granulating. Almost like jeans. Denim. And I really appreciate that color because that is the first thing that I mixed. And it's called Dirty Blue. It's the first video I posted online about mixing pigments. And that yellow and blue doesn't always give green. Um, that was on a different app. Uh, where that video went viral, uh, like a few million views w within a few days. Mostly because, you know, people really believe that all yellows and all blues would give, like, green. But as I'm going to show you during this series in the Pigment Podcast, red and blue doesn't always give you the violet that people tell you it would give. Almost none of the times a, a red and a blue would give you a beautiful deep violet. A red pigment, however, PR pigment, stands for pigment red, with a PB pigment, pigment blue, gives you a beautiful deep versatile violet but you need to find the right pigments for it a magenta for instance PR122 in combination with ultramarine blue PB29 would give you a violet that is that, that, that goes from ultramarine violet towards dioxazine violet and like a deep Quinacridone violet. Um, the range that you know, those two pigments give in the magenta towards blue and everything in between is is, is amazing. But when I use uh, a pyrrole red, PR two fifty five, and I mix that with the same blue, it's like almost scarlet leaning red it wouldn't give me anything like the violets that I had just had with the magenta, which is a PR pigment as well. Right, so I'm thinking in pigments like that. We have PB, pigment blue, PG, pigment green, PY, pigment yellow, PO, pigment orange, PR, pigment red, and PV, pigment violet. Then we have like the... Uh, less chromatic versions uh, in pigment families. We have PBR pigments, pigment brown, PBK pigments, pigment black, and PW, pigment white. Um, there's also a couple of PM pigments, pigment metal, metallic, uh, which is just 
ground up aluminum, um, I think zinc powder. They're over there. There are a few PM pigments. And we have pigments that start with the N instead of the P. Then we're talking about natural pigments. Natural yellow 20, for instance, NY20, is genuine Indian yellow, whereas PY153 is my synthetic version of Indian yellow. Same name, different pigment number. One is discontinued, well, actually both are discontinued, but one has been banned, and the other is a synthetic remake of, the, of, of a similar hue. NB1, for instance, would be indigo. PB66 is also indigo. It's the synthetic remake of the natural version. It's a lot less smelly, too, if you know indigo as a pigment. It, it's really on not only how they act on paper, but also how they mix. Some pigments are leading towards the warmer side. Some pigments are leading towards the cooler side. Uh, you can do that for you can say that about yellows or, or reds, blues, greens, and how they are placed within that hue circle because we have different hue angles. Also, can learn us a bit on how they will mix with different pigments within that circle and I'm going to tell you more about it uh, throughout the entire series I'm going to show you examples of, I've already shown you examples of that um, that map of pigments that I use from um, Bruce McAvoy from handprint.com which is a great source I'm going to put that down in the description below um, it's a beautiful source that just that map the pigments um, in a certain format so you can just see where, where they are located within the visible uh, color spectrum and it's just great to have that as a tool but once you uh, hear, see, read uh, uh, work more with and about pigments uh, the more kind of it gets more intuitive you don't have to look it up you see a uh, less chromatic earthy yellow and you would know this would never give you a bright green but if you have a uh, a very chromatic yellow uh, which mixes beautifully it can give you the most vibrant greens you would ever need. So knowing the pigments, knowing how different hues would mix with other pigments or other hues is very important. And I'm going to show you that. I'm going to uh, not teach you, but I'm go just going to bring you along uh, the adventure, the, the, the stories behind these pigments. So hopefully... You like this idea? If you have any suggestions, uh, leave them down below in the comments. Uh, like the video, subscribe, turn on notifications if you don't if you don't want to miss the latest videos, and uh, uh, let's do this together. Right? This is the Pigment Podcast, and I'm here to share my passion with you, where we can. Hopefully share this passion together. See you next time and have a great and colorful day.